Hello, my name is Jeremy Duncan, and I'm presenting my project on the composition of industrial stearic acid. Today, I'm going to present some background information, followed by the methods I used for testing, and then I'll present the data and results and finish with uh, a conclusion and some next steps for future testing. I'll begin with the introduction. I'm the Senior Wax Development Specialist in the R&D Laboratory for Yankee Candle. I work exclusively with wax-based fragrance delivery systems and explore new wax sources and technologies. Basically, I develop and test new wax blends and materials. Steric acid is a fatty acid derived mainly from palm oil. You can see in the bottom image the fruit of the palm tree and the oil derived from it. Industrial steric acid comes in a variety of purity levels and is mainly blended with palmitic acid, but other fatty acids may be included. I routinely use steric acid in candles as an additive to provide structure and increase the hardness of the wax blend and to control the liquid phase of a wax substrate. As you can see in the image at the bottom left, sometimes liquid accumulates on the candle's surface as it cools. This is not desirable and sometimes it can be reduced or eliminated through the addition of steric acid. There were a couple of reasons why I wanted to test steric acid. Firstly, I wanted to see if there were any differences between the steric acid used in our U US manufacturing facility and the steric acid used in our European manufacturing facility. Secondly, because I've never studied the composition of industrial steric acid, I thought it would be interesting. Most importantly, I wanted to understand if steric acid contained any oleic acid. On the top left is the structure for oleic acid. The structure for steric acid is directly below it. Both are composed of 18 carbons, but oleic acid has a double bond at carbon 9. This makes it a monounsaturated fatty acid. I'm concerned about potential oleic acid content because past testing I've performed has indicated that oleic acid might contribute to two defects commonly seen in candles, frosting and polymorphism. Frosting appears on candles during cooling or after exposure to cold and is caused by adhesion and contraction. It resembles frost on your car windshield in the winter. As the wax pulls away from the glass, it can leave a film and we refer to this as frosting. It's not reversible and it doesn't impact the candles performance or its safety. Polymorphism is an unwanted crystalline structure that appears on a candle during cooling or after exposure to heat. If you look at the blue oval in the image at the left, polymorphism looks sort of like cross hatching. Like frosting, it is not reversible and does not impact the candle's performance or its safety. For this project, I tested samples of the US steric acid the European steric acid, as well as laboratory grade samples of steric, palmitic, oleic, myristic, and linoleic acid. I mentioned the structure of oleic acid earlier, but I also wanted to point out that linoleic acid also has 18 carbons, and it has a double bond at carbons 9 and 12. It's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Next, I'll talk a little about the methods I use to test samples. I wanted to take a quick minute to share a little disclaimer. Working at Yankee Candle has a few advantages. Firstly, I have access to advanced analytical equipment. Secondly, I've received extensive training on how to operate and maintain the equipment. And lastly, I've been trained on how to interpret the results produced on the equipment. It doesn't hurt to have access to a number of chemists either. The first piece of equipment used to analyze the samples was DSC, or Differential Scanning Calorimeter. Basically, it generates a heat curve of solid samples that can be used to identify the melt point of a material. DSC works by measuring the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of a sample compared to a known standard. The second piece of equipment I used to analyze the samples was GCMS or gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. Anyone who's a fan of the show Bones will recognize the GC mass spec 
has the go-to equipment to analyze crime scene chemicals. GCMS is a great tool to detect trace amounts of substances, but significant quantitative work generally requires building a concentration curve. Very briefly, GCMS uses the GC component to separate the molecules of a sample, while the MS component ionizes the molecules, separates the ions by mass and charge, and detects the sorted ions. The last piece of equipment I used was GCFID. GCFID, or gas chromatography with flame ionization detection, is good at analyzing carbon content in organic samples. A quick overview of GCFID. The GC component separates the molecules of a sample, while the FID component oxidizes the molecules creating ions. It then collects the ions and measures the electrical signal they create. In this section, I'll present the data and results of the testing. Beginning with DSC, we can see in the chart at the left, the melt points of the US and European samples are very similar. The US and European samples are represented by the gray and yellow bars. Notice the blue and orange bars, the steric acid and palmitic acid laboratory controls, have significantly higher melt points. This is because industrial steric acid is a eutectic mixture. Its melting point is lower than any of its constituent components. Next, the GCMS data. The chart on the left shows the US sample, while the chart on the right shows the European sample. Both contain steric and palmitic acids, but the US sample also contains a small amount of myristic acid. Lastly, the GCFID data. Again, the US sample is on the left, while the European sample is on the right. Again, both samples are mostly steric and palmitic acids. Note that both samples also contain a small amount of margaric acid, and that the US sample contains a small amount of myristic acid. This chart is a summary of the data from the US sample, and I've also included specifications from the US technical data sheet. GCMS and GCFID results are consistent and fall within the amount of steric, palmitic, and myristic acid amounts listed on the technical data sheet for the US sample. Similar to the US sample, this is a summary of the data from the European sample. I've also included specifications from the European technical data sheet. GCMS and GCFID results are consistent for steric and myristic acids, but differ slightly relative to palmitic acid. As with the US sample, the data falls within the amount of steric, palmitic, and myristic acids listed on the technical data sheet for the European sample. And next, to the conclusion. Both the US and European samples come from Malaysia and are mostly composed of steric and palmitic acids. It's likely, however, that they are two different grades of industrial steric acid. I have since learned that the European sample is actually a pharmaceutical grade of industrial steric acid. Additionally, both samples contained a small amount of margaric acid. Most importantly, neither industrial steric acid sample contained oleic acid. This means the defects are likely caused by another mechanism. This leads me to my next steps. I need to verify that other additives that I use do not contain oleic acid. Most importantly, I need to explore other potential causes for these defects, such as the age and oxidation levels of wax, variations in cooling conditions, and whether mixing specifications ensure batch homogeneity. Thanks for viewing my presentation. I want to give a quick thanks to my coworkers and especially to my advisor and professor, Tricia Basford. Thank you.